So, another word for that is problem solving. Okay, this one, we're going to draw you a picture. Okay, remember I was looking for this yesterday. I know it said it somewhere in the book. Sometimes you want to look at your picture and see if it kind of makes sense. Other times, maybe it won't because it's not to scale. Okay? So just, you know, keep that in mind. But it's always a good idea to try to look. Carmen is a surveyor. Maybe they're a civil engineer who's using this thing. They call that a transit. Okay, you ever seen these in the sides of the roads before they build them? They are able to tell what the angles are. Where do we need to build our road? You don't want to like start building a road from this side, your left, my right. Building a road from this end, and then they have them do this. That's what surveying does. We want to know where the baseline is. Okay, these things have... It's like, think of it like a level, okay? And we can check slopes and things. There's a lot that goes into roads. You know, you want to crown the road in the center so the water sheds off of it. Does everyone know we do this? The last thing you want is to make a little bowl, right? And have like three feet of water in the center of the road. That wouldn't be good. Okay. So apparently the name for this machine is a transit. Okay. So anyway, we want to know the height of a tree. That's what we want to know. Okay, the transit is placed 52 meters from the base. Well, we're being nice. We're already giving you the picture with some of the stuff in here. And the angle to the top of the tree, or what's the other word for this? Mac, pay attention. Angle of elevation from the horizontal. From the horizontal up is elevation. From the horizontal down is depression. Remember how depressed people walk? Okay. So, if the transit is 1.8 meters high, where can I draw that? From here to here, that's 1.8 meters. Calculate the height of the tree. Why is this a more involved question than usual? Because if you just do the trigonometry part, you don't get the height of the tree, do you? Because that will only give you from here to here. We need to, at the end of this question, just remember to add this distance, 1.8, to whatever we get in our triangle. That will give us the total height of the tree. Okay? So first, the trig part. I want to know, let's call this x this distance from here to here. That's what the trig's going to get us. What ratio do I want to use? Label your triangle. That's the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. For this angle, this is the opposite. Okay, and so that is the adjacent. So I'm trying to find O I'm given A, what ratio do I want to use? Which one has O and A? Tangent. Okay, the tangent of 12 degrees equals opposite. That's what I'm trying to find. I called it X. You can let it be O, you can let it be V for Virginia, whatever you like. Okay, over adjacent is 52. Okay, it's the numerator is what I'm trying to find. Don't get confused and think we're going to swap every, anything here. I just want x by itself. How do I get rid of 52? Yeah, it says x divided by 52. What's the opposite of divide? Multiply both sides by 52. 52 divided by 52 is 1. So it's gone. And put that in your calculator and you should get... 52 times 10, 12, or 12 tangent equals times 52, depends on your calculator, 11.1, okay, to the nearest tenth, but is that my final answer? I want the height of the tree, so to that I need to add 1.8.
to take into account this transit, right? Okay, so that's 12.9. Do I have a unit? Yes, I do. It's in meters. Okay, to the nearest tenth. Make sure you read the question. All right, um, don't worry about part B. Now, I got a question for you guys. How much circle geometry did you do last year? Calvin? Not very much? Mm. Okay. Well, there's some relationships that is in the grade 9 curriculum that most of us should have gotten, but I can't guarantee that you do. This is a circle. It's got a center C and a radius. What's the definition for a radius again? It is half a diameter, but it's always, always, always from the center to the edge of the circle. Yeah, that's 20 millimeters. It's tangent to the arms P, O, Q. Tangent means this line just touches the circle in one point, right there. And here it doesn't look like it because the photocopying didn't come out, but right there too. This, uh, think, think, planets. Right here at O could be a satellite. And what do we think if he looked at this side of Saturn, this distance, okay, what would you think about this distance compared to that distance? Do they kind of look the same? They are. We're not going to prove that today, but that always happens. I don't care where he is. If he's there, this distance, that point of tangency, is equal to that distance. Okay? doesn't matter where he is. Okay, what else do we got? Angle POQ, POQ, okay, trace that. We're talking about O here. O is 50 degrees. Okay? Determine the length of OC. Well, where is that? Here's O. There's C. That's what I got to find. Okay, and if I'm haven't had too much coffee, I can probably draw that pretty straight. All right. All right, what do I do? How do I solve that length? The more we know about circles, the easier this question might be. Maybe. Not today. Pi has to do with a circumference, maybe an area. It's in both of those. What kind of a triangle do we guys need in grade 10 to solve anything? Right angle triangle. Ask yourself a question. Where can I draw this radius that's going to help me? Does this help me? Does that one? How about this one? How about that one? Something else that we should have learned in grade 10 was any time you touch that point of tangency to the center, this is called a radius, that makes a 90 degree angle. Always, always, always. I could do one here too. Let's not discriminate. Let's put one on that side too. Okay? I still, I need to find the length of OC. So I need a couple of pieces of information. Well, there's one. I know that's 20. That's one piece of information. I need two, or I can't do anything. Do we see some symmetry happening here? Yeah. Guess what this angle is right here? Yeah, it's 25, and so is this one, okay? So now, if it helps, you know, if it's getting all cluttered, you know what? Redraw it. This is what I have. That's 20. That's 25. I want to find this is length OC. Now do I have two pieces of information? Yuppers. I can solve this. What ratio do I want to use? This is the hypotenuse. This is opposite, so that's adjacent. Which one has O and H? So does O and H. So the sine of 25 equals, don't forget this equals, guys, okay? O, that's 20, over H, which is length OC. That's what I'm trying to find. What's the shortcut 
if it's a denominator, what I'm trying to find, what am I going to do? I'm going to swap this and that. Okay, so OC now is up here. Equals 20 over sine 25 is now down there. And that I can put in my calculator. All right. Well, tediously, let me change this to degrees. Is everybody in degrees? Or did your friend grab your calculator and switch it for you so you get all the wrong answers? I've seen it happen. Okay, I've seen a kid. This is physics 12. This isn't math 10. Did I tell you the story? Okay. She did her test. We're doing lots of trigonometry on it. Okay, all right, that's the answer for this one. Yep, yep, all right, bang, 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 that's the answer for this one. Well, she failed it, of course, because everything, her calculator was in radians, not degrees, and half of those answers were all wrong, and all I could say was, sorry, check your calculator next time. Again, if we're aware of what kind of answers we're getting, maybe we could have figured that out, but, and it was one of these calculators. The only way you can change this thing for, into radians is, because it can't, you can't just hit a button. You have to go math button and then scroll down like you just saw me do. Okay? I mean, how does that, well, mode button, not math button. Scroll down and then go into, I mean, what happened? The other option is, and probably this, she changed the batteries. Once you do that, it resets. And it's like mine. Every time I bring it up, it's in radians. I've got to change it to degrees. So anyway, I will try to remind you right before the test but double check your calculator. It better say DEG on the top. Okay, so what is 20 divided by sine 25? 47.3, how do you want your answer? Nearest millimeter. So that means that's 47 millimeters. Okay. Let's look at this sweet question. So just like our transit, if we're looking at things, if I'm looking at this tree out here or the mountain and I want to see the elevation, can I just use my trick for my eye? No, unless I put my eye right down on the ground. Usually we don't like to do that because that's rather uncomfortable. Okay, You can get it pretty close, but you can't get it right on the ground. So when we talk about elevation or depression, we sometimes think about eye level and not right from the ground. This is a more practical question. All right? This guy sees who? His wife. Oh, the poor guy. Okay, so angle of elevation, if, I lo if he looks straight across and then up, that's the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation from him to his wife is 62 degrees. Remember, there's a relationship here. Don't do this, but if these are parallel, and they are, they're both horizontal lines, this is called a transversal, any straight line. This angle is the same as that one. So you can also say... For her point of view, she's looking down on him, and her angle of depression is also 62 degrees. Okay? That's the same thing. So, he is 6 feet tall. His wife is 5.2 feet from the top of the building, from here to there. Okay? How tall is the building? That's the question. So before the trig, we need the strategy. We need the concept. How am I going to find the whole height of the building? And you got to think, well, trig is only going to get me this part. Okay, let's call it x. That's from here to here. To get the height of the building, I need to add this to x and then add this to get the total height of the building. So it's kind of like our first question, only have two things to add. All right. Do I have enough information here to solve for x? Do I have two pieces of the puzzle? 
Not yet, I don't. What am I missing from this question? Is this given? I see something I didn't write in here yet. Ah, okay. And you got to read. If the man's eye level is six feet above the ground, okay, and his wife's 5.2 feet from the top of the building, determine the height. No, no, I didn't really get that. Oh, there it is. Lots of wording here, right? I know, I know. He is 12 feet from the wall. So from the wall, that's 12 now, and you probably want to write it up there. Now I got two pieces of information. How do I find x? Label your triangle. Here's the right angle, because we're going to assume buildings are built perpendicularly, or what's the other word in carpentry? Plum. It's the one I was looking for? Yeah. Plum. Okay. That's hypotenuse. For this angle, this x is opposite. 12 is the adjacent. Which one has, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find O. I'm given A. Which one has O and A? Oh. Tangent of 62 is X, or let it be O, let it be H, whatever you like, over 12. So X is 12 times 10, 62. Put that in your calculator, and that is 22.56. Is that the answer? What do we got to do? I got to add this, and I got to add that. And that's why I didn't round this yet, because you know what? Maybe that'll change my answer. I only want to round my final answer to the tenth of a foot. So that is 22.56 plus 5.2 plus 6 feet is 33.76 to the tenth is 33.8 feet. That's how tall the building is. All right. Flip on over to page 249. We're going to go do a couple out of here too. More problem solving. Okay, I just got one example here. I'm just going to do that. So, we've got some skills. Hopefully you can find an angle given a ratio. Hopefully you can find a ratio given an angle. Those are just skills. This is more like grade 10 level, okay? What's the strategy? How am I going to solve the question? Things like explain how to, all right? Calculate the measure of BEC. First of all, you got to know where that angle is. Otherwise, you don't have a hope. You don't have a single chance. Just follow your finger. B E C. What's the middle one here? Which this sandwich is this angle. Okay? And do that. Like some of us are still what, what, which one? I said this is kind of like your clue, the middle letter. But here. Some people might want to take this one. Some people might want to take the whole thing. The only way to know for sure is just take your pencil and trace this a few times. These two sandwich this angle. Okay? That's what I want. So visually block out this right side for a sec. Just look here. Can I solve that using that left triangle? I need... Two pieces of information. Do I have two pieces of information here? I only have one. I can't do that. So this is called a two-step problem. How do I get my other piece of information? Either I need, well, I can't get, this is the angle they're trying to get me to get. If I have this angle, that would be two pieces. If I have this length, that would be two pieces. Or if I had this length, that would be two pieces. Which one can I get? 
yeah, I can get this from this triangle. Okay. So how do I get this from this triangle? Do I have two pieces of information here? Yes, I do. Okay. So for this triangle, this is the hypotenuse. This is 39 across from it. H is the opposite. Okay, so this must be the adjacent, but you know what? I don't care. I have H. I'm trying to find O. Which one has O and H? Sine of 39 is the opposite, which is the height, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3.7. So that's my first thing I need to do, find the height. Then when I have the height, then I can get this angle or this angle or whatever I need. Okay, times by 3.7 to get rid of it. H is 3.7 times sine of 39. That doesn't, oh, that's right, okay, yeah. 3.7, that looks reasonable, doesn't it? Let me look at my answer. Yep, okay. I don't know why I was looking for an angle there, but the height is, okay. Do I want to round this? No. no. Do not make it 2. Do not make it 2.3. Don't even make it 2.32. Because this says nearest degree, but if it said tenths degree and I'm rounding this height, you're going to get the wrong answer. Only round your final answer. The more decimals you can bring here, the better off you're going to be. I'm going to go at least three. 2.328. Okay? At least go to the tenths, hundredths, thousandths place. Okay? Because you can't, like, that's how tall this thing is. It looks like an irrational number. This is an approximation. Don't round this. Your final answer will be off. Okay. All right. So that's 2.328. Now, 2.328. I want to find this angle, right? So how do I do that? Relabel the triangle. This angle, first that's the hypotenuse. This is the opposite. So this height for this angle is adjacent. Okay? New problem, new triangle, you have to relabel it. It's not the opposite anymore. Which one, which ratio has A and H? Cosine. So the cosine of, let's call it just E, but it's actually B, E, C, okay? is adjacent 2.328 over hypotenuse 4.6. You can divide that and make it a big decimal now if you want, but why bother? Okay. If you don't know the angle, what button are you pushing on your calculator? Second function, inverse cosine, cosine to the minus 1 of this ratio will give you the angle. is 59.596 something 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 to the nearest degree what is that 60. you see if this came out to a four your final answer would be 59. that's a whole degree off and if this was a multiple choice question on a government exam do you think they're going to have both options there yes. you bet the a will be 59 b will be 60 30% of every kid who writes this in the province might pick answer A because they rounded H and they designed the question that way. Okay, they try to trip you. So that is, what did I say, 60 degrees? Yeah. Okay, combination type questions. That's it. We're going to do a couple on the first bit I did. And then a couple out of this one. Tomorrow I got a little handout 
for you and some practice questions in the book. I'll actually write that. If you finish this and you feel like doing something tonight to make tomorrow easier, then feel free. Okay? If you're done, these are practice questions out of the book. I'll assign those tomorrow and give you a little handout. And of course, test is Thursday. <laughs>